it's copied twice. I only want to grab one instance of this link and go to it once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the information in front. Okay, and let me just get rid of this. And I'm going to use look ahead, look behind in regular expressions. Um, I'm not going to try to uh, explain that, and this is kind of beyond the scope of this. But I'm just going to select the first character. Okay, now what that says is look for this character, okay, before the link that I'm trying to make. And as you can see, it's grabbing two of them here. See that there? But you'll see in a second how the, the rest is just going to drop away here. I'm going to go two forward slashes, p-h-i-n-n dot com, forward slash register. Okay. Now if I look in this document, I'm only grabbing the single one and we're going to grab exactly what we want. Now I'm going to use one more character here because you see at the end there's some stuff here that I don't want. So I'm going to put a dot, a star, not greedy, and again I'm not going to get into the nonsense of regex in this lesson. Okay, so there we go. We've created a regular expression here. This is saying, you know, look for the last character that shows that is a uh, a, uh, a less than sign, but don't include it. So that works really well. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to go back to the email processing tab. I'm going to lay that regular expression in here, and I'm going to see if I can parse that out. And there we go. We've parsed out the piece that we want. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, and this is something that I need to reemphasize. Remember what we did here? We did a copy to editor. You want to do that and get your initial code on the page here before you do this next step. We're going to say add the step. Okay. Now if we go back to the template editor, you're going to see there's a little bit of piece here. This is the actual code to find that parsed link. Okay. So there's the email address, the password, the, the mail server information, and finally for identification what we're looking for in for the message and the actual regular expression to pull the actual link out. But now we have to do one more thing. We have to actually complete the steps to finish doing the registration. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to delete this step. Okay? And I'm going to take the link that I parsed out. I'm going to delete. Oh, sorry. That's still pulling that regular expression. So let me grab this. I'm going to copy that. Control C. Over to here. Control V. Okay, so there's that regular expression. I'm going to go to that page. And you see it creates a new step for me, clears the cookies, that's what we want, and it actually is going to that page. Okay, so now we need to find something that helps us ascertain whether or not this worked. Okay, so there we have something right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that text, welcome comma, okay, comma, or I'm going to right click on that, create it a text presence. Okay, there's the welcome, and there we go. It might not be, it's a little thin, but it's better than nothing. Now, the reason why I removed the step that we had in there before is when I do a copy to the editor again, I'm not going to recopy the code that I've already laid into the editor. And as you can see, there's those steps right there. Okay, so there's, we have the steps. If we have the step to clear cookies, we have the step to go to the actual link, we have the step to, um, go to or to yeah go to that page and then we look for that parameter the welcome and if it's present we can do an if if it's there if it's not there and we're good to go okay so that's how we design a basic program now next we actually have to tell the program where to start because sometimes you might put these pieces in in different order so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here and you see when I've clicked the web actions for the first section there is a first step. This will be the first step in the project. I will click that. I'm also going to name this. I'm going to say first steps to registering on siphon.com. Okay? Now I can go to the next step. You know, in here you see, click on the link underneath comment. You can change that to anything you want. So like right here, we're actually in entering a username, okay? 
So I'm going to just go down here a little bit. Now I'm going to change that too. So this is something I can remember later, and you can see it names the top of the box that. I'm going to go to this one here. Now, here again, you can see I could put a different email address in here. I could put some logic before this to pick an email address out of a file, and that's again beyond the scope of this tutorial. I'll do that in a later date, or and insert it into here. But let me show you a little bit of that. Again, once again, then you have password. You have to enter a password, and then okay you can see here the sequence is just a little bit out so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the sequence in the right order here so here's our first password now what I want to do is I actually want to simplify things so in the future you can see it's like password 123 password 123 I want to make this easier to use and not have to change the password in two different locations when you're looking inside of the actual information here I'm sorry it's a little scrunched i try to open this up a little bit here for you. You can see that there is an execution result, okay? If I hover over here, you'll see it, it'll, it's a little bit cut off the screen, but it says copy to clipboard. I can click on that. I can select the next field here, and in the attribute value, I can highlight that, and I can replace it with what I just copied. Ah, sorry, my clipboard's not working very well right now. I'm going to click to copy it. I go over to here, and you can see it's grabbed the field value. You see it says 425199. Let's take a look here. This field, its name is 425199. Okay? This is how Xenoposter identifies each and every field that it fills in. Okay, so basically what we've done here is we've changed this value and said whatever we put into here, I want you to copy the result and put it into here. Okay, so we can again modify this later to put in a random character sequence or whatever we want. Okay. Okay, there is the actual monkey enter.dll. This is so you can actually enter the uh, CAPTCHA manually. Again, this can be changed. Inside Xenoposter, we can select another type of CAPTCHA. You know, we can have anti bot, anti CAPTCHA, CAPTCHA bot, death CAPTCHA, or death or CAPTCHA, decaptcha, whatever we want. For now, we're going to leave monkey enter. Okay. Next we have, um, I think we're just selecting a field, Sele oh yes, this is where the CAPTCHA is filled in, okay, the recognized CAPTCHA. Eventually we get down to here, and if we everything goes good, we are going to want to be able to go to the next step. If we see that page like we did, the, the recognize the piece on the page, we want to continue on. And the next step would be to actually look for that email, and then fill it in a little down here. So what I'm going to do is because we only want to be able to put values in once. Like I only want to have to put the email value in once. And as you can see, let me go over to here. If I click on here, you see that the actual login is the email address. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go up here and because the email is already inserted right here. Okay, see the email? I'm going to again, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to grab it by copying it the result. I'm going to go down here. Okay, and click on here. And I'm going to take this here and I'm going to paste this in here. The login is this. And that will be grabbing the email. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the password. There's no other place that I'm grabbing the password for the email, but so I don't have another substitute. But right now, remember we had this if statement that we actually created, and an if statement is just like a logic statement saying if we see that piece on the page, green means yes we go, it was successful we found it, red means we didn't find it, okay? And blue is what we tie to, okay? So let me show you. So you do two left clicks on the green, two left clicks on the blue. So what it does is it creates an arrow saying if I find that thing on the page which says it's a green, go to the step here which is the blue and it's a double click on the green double click on the blue okay and that then takes us to here okay it's going to log in with the email password and such it's going to look for the message 
Okay, and what it's going to do next, it's it's going to want to go to the next set of actions. Okay, I'm just moving these down for simplicity's sake. So you can see all the pieces come together. Okay, so here's our first part, here's our second part. Okay, and um, what I'm going to do is again, unfortunately this is a lo not a logic step, it's not an if statement. Um, so I'm just going to select the green bubble and I'm going to select the blue. Like it doesn't matter if I select the green, red, whatever. I'm just going to select the green and I'm just going to have it go to the blue here, okay? There's no logic unfortunately to check if I got the email or not. I could add a step in saying, um, if this step is blank, then uh, go on to the next one. Well, actually, let's throw that in. What do you say? So I'm going to create a new web action. Sit right below here. Okay. And I'm going to put a step branch in. I'm going to get a get. I'm going to drop it in there. I'm going to get a macro. Drop it in there. And once again, I can go back to the macro editor. And now what I'm going to say is, I want to see if I actually get anything here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to click on this to get the result here. Oh, message partial result. So either I'm going to have something or I'm going to have nothing. Okay. Actually, I'm doing this wrong already. My apologies. So let's do that again, step branch. I'm going to do a set, and I'm going to do a logical operation. Okay. 